Before I officially get this video rolling, I would like to give a quick shout out to my friend Echo Soul, who spent a lot of time and effort editing together a, a highlight of my Pac-Man World 2 Let's Play. It's, it's really fun, I, it even had me laughing, and it's a highlight of me playing the game. So you can tell that his editing uh, definitely went the extra mile with the, uh, the comedic properties of that Let's Play. So, if you want to give him a view, if you want to have some laughs, click the card on screen and it'll take, it, take you to his video. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and like you, I was immensely excited at the prospect of a sequel to Breath of the Wild. We all knew that they were developing a Zelda game using the Breath of the Wild engine, but I don't think any of us expected the game to pick up right where Breath of the Wild left off. The last game to do that was Majora's Mask, which also is the only other Zelda game that used, or I guess 3D Zelda game, that used its predecessor's engine and assets. And we see the results of, of that system. Breath, uh, Majora's Mask is a fantastic Zelda game, one of my favorites, and I, I hope that the sequel to Breath of the Wild will be too. Now for this video, I'm just going to jump right into it because the intro is usually where people click off the video, so I'm going to try to get you guys through this as quickly and efficiently as possible. Uh, I'm going to be using an edited version of my of the trailer. Uh, I released this on my channel, you can see there, there it is. Uh, and it's edited in chronological order, or my perceived chronological order based on the lighting, based on uh, some other things like who's holding the torch at different times. Um, and I, I guess that's also something that I'm adding to this analysis, is that there is an order that I'm perceiving this to go in. Um, in fact, this trailer is probably the very beginning of the game. I could imagine in almost like an Uncharted style, the game begins in this kind of tutorial parkour cave, uh, where you're able to test out your, your abilities, help Zelda get through with the, the boar that they're riding. But I guess we're going to get that get there in a second. Uh, before I get into this, the overarching theme of this is that there is music, and so, which you cannot really experience in this because it's edited, so, oops, uh, opened Elgato software there. So, I, I like to go through this. Unreversed, it doesn't sound like anything. Uh, in fact, unreversed, it sounds like it is reversed. Like, just listen to this. That, that sounds reversed. So, when I reversed it, this is what it sounds like. There we go. Froze for a moment. So, it actually sounds unreversed, but... The thing is, the tune isn't immediately apparent, and prior to me making this, I wasn't entirely sure that it had a tune, but then I decided just to, to cheat a little bit and look up to see what people had thought, and on this uh, this article on Heavy.com, uh, it mentions the Battlefield of Demise theme. It mentions some other stuff too, but when sped up, the Battlefield of Demise sounds quite similar. Give it a listen. So it's not quite one-to-one, -one, but I think if it's anything, that's the most similar tune in Zelda to this. Uh, it's not much of a stretch. I'm not going to call it the Battlefield of Demise theme, because there are definitely some differences, but I did want to make note of that, because reversing music is a common theme in, in Zelda. They love doing that with like the Battle Ballad of the Goddess theme, um, and so I decided to give that a quick note, and now we can actually get into the trailer. I'm going to skip this part of the beginning because it is literally just a close-up of something we're going to see. There's nothing special. Uh, this first shot, I find one of the most interesting ones in the entire thing. Uh, right there. Oh boy. There we go. Right here. It, it's very hard to see because there's a haze. Hopefully that haze doesn't return from Breath of the Wild. That was one of the stupidest parts of the game. It really made things look ugly, but... This looks like a dungeon to me. And I have a feeling... 
that we might be getting dungeons back, which was one of the biggest gripes with Breath of the Wild is that it doesn't it only has one real dungeon, and that is Hyrule Castle, and that's barely even a dungeon since you can just skip to the end. So we might get dungeons back. I'm happy about that. Okay, they are walking across this bridge here. I want to make sure my playback speed's good. Okay. Uh, and that is this is one of also one of the biggest things that I would like to point out. Uh, and I guess this this trailer is very front-loaded, but these crystals, we've seen them before, and I'm going to play a little bit more just to, yeah, this shot. This is a much better look at them, and we have seen these crystals before. These are Time Shift Stones from Skyward Sword. Uh, you can see the color matches. Uh, I'm, let me see if I can find an image of them activated. Okay, the only image I was able to find was of a a, a cut time, time shift stone being activated, but you can see this is the same color. So there are time shift stones presumably underneath Hyrule Castle. Uh, that isn't necessarily confirmed, but uh, it, that seems to be the indication that they are underneath Hyrule Castle, which means this area that they are walking in, since they are activated, is in the past. And that's an important distinction that we're going to get into in a moment here. Uh, Zelda is riding this really funny boar. I think we saw these, or this bull. We saw these in Breath of the Wild. Uh, she is holding a torch, which is kind of important. This shot, she's dismounting from the animal, and this is when they leave it behind, presumably because the terrain is, too, is uh, rougher than it can handle. Adding to the, the continuity. Here, I believe these shots are connected. She brings the torch, sweeps it from left to right, and we get this shot of her looking at the wall. Uh, this is very difficult to dis distinguish, but it is a picture of Ganon holding a trident. Uh, now, in case you're not too immersed in your Zelda lore, the only time Ganondorf has had a trident like this was in Four Swords Adventures. So... We'll see. Uh, that is in different timelines, depending on which timeline you follow. I personally think the Hyrule Historia one makes a lot more sense, because it actually makes sense within the canon established in the games, as opposed to directly uh, opposing them. It's very difficult to tell what Ganondorf is looking at here, but I believe it's a guardian. I believe he is holding the spear against a guardian. Um... I'm not sure what else to make of it other than that. Zelda's surprised by this. And then we get this shot here. First of all, Zelda has a, a shorter haircut, uh, which shows that she's been here for a while. Uh, last we saw her on their way to, to Hateno Village, her hair was still long, so it's nice to see that uh, they're not just copy-pasting things. This, this is the weirdest thing. Uh, this spiral is a similar color to the Time Shift Stones, and it's... Ryan and I have bandied back and forth as to what this thing could be. Um, I I thought that it could be... He thought that it uh, is a sealing spell that is unraveling. And I thought that's possible. I could also... I also thought it could be like the, the hand of time itself, which is reverting the body that it is grasping here. You see there? Um, so it... Hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. This... I believe this is Ganondorf. I believe uh, that it is straight up Ganondorf, and I will... Uh, obviously, the the gem in the head, the red hair, the Gerudo, uh, the Gerudo bracelets and jewelry uh, all make sense for it to be Ganondorf. This shot right here, I still don't know what to make of this. Uh, it looks like... It looks like Ganondorf or whatever this is, I'll just say... Uh, I'll just say the unsub at this point, the unknown subject, uh, is is reeling away from this hand. So the hand could be evil, the skeleton could be evil, we're not sure. This, I have no clue what to make of it. Um, I would like to point out that it is Link's right hand. Um, actually, I think... No, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. It's his right hand, don't know what to make of that. Um... This, I believe, is at the moment of the skeleton's reawakening. Judging this continuity by the lighting. And here, this is where I actually want to talk about what this thing is. I am fairly certain this is Ganondorf for a few reasons. 
One, because... Well, actually, I, I believe that it is Twilight Princess Ganondorf. And the reason for that, if I can rewind here... When we first see a close-up of the hand... Right there. Right there. It's holding on to a stab wound. In... Oh, where'd it go? There it is. In Twilight Princess, Ganondorf has a stab wound. And I think I think this is pretty pretty conclusive, uh, the stab wound in the chest. Ganondorf was stabbed twice there. But also, at the moment of his his revival here, we hear his neck break. In Twilight Princess, when Ganondorf dies, we see this. And the story here from Twilight Princess is that Ganondorf is dead. His spirit is essentially all that remains. And so he makes a pact with Zant so that they, the two of them are bonded and can revive each other. Zant says that get his master Ganondorf can revive me uh, as many times as he chooses. However, Ganondorf chooses to not revive Zant. And in the end, Zant refuses to revive Ganondorf. So in this trailer, it's either Gandorf shirking off the curse, but it has something to do with that curse. The net, neck breaking. Now, I, I did try to go a little bit overboard with this, uh, with the neck break sound effect. It could be the same one. I don't, I don't think it matters either way, but I, I decided to go overboard with that because that's what fans enjoy doing. Um, but combined with the, the Gerudo jewelry, the gem on his head, the... I guess the the thunder blight or the the blight Ganon eyes, the neck break and the chest wound. I am pretty convinced that this is Ganondorf. Um, also, this is the uh, Toilet Princess Ganondorf. I'm losing my tabs here. Toilet Princess Ganondorf is the only one that has left a body, so it it makes sense that if it's any Ganondorf, unless it's some one that we've never seen before, it is this one. His hair is curled, so it could be long. It could actually be longer. Now proceeding with the trailer after the neck break, everything, everything goes haywire. Zelda turns around, falls, as the the castle starts shifting tectonically or rising, as we're about to see. I would like to point out here: Link grabs Zelda's hand with his right hand, and then, as she falls, the hand, the mysterious time time hand grabs his left. Now, Ryan and I have theorized, and then also the castle starts to rise. Ryan and I have theorized that the main mechanic of Breath of the, or Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be that Link is somehow cursed. Um, judging by this. But the problem is with that theory is that that is his right hand, which grabbed Zelda, his left grabbed the spooky hand. So, this is the one clip that- I, well, one of the two clips that I have no idea what's going on. Link now has this magic hand, maybe he has some magic, I don't know. But I think the most likely uh, scenario is that he's possibly cursed somehow. And, and this is what I think is going to be going on. Uh, in. Breath of the Wild, uh, the actual translation of Ganondorf giving up on resurrection is actually Ganondorf uh, abandoning reincarnation. Uh, and how I interpret that is that Demise's curse has gotten so weak uh, from, you know, these eons of, of time passing and continued reincarnations that Ganondorf actually has to work to be reincarnated now, since the curse doesn't have the power to keep doing it. So that's why we see in Breath of the Wild, Ganondorf trying to build himself a new body. Uh, concept art. 
Unfortunately, I can't find it, but I remember there being concept art of Ganondorf, um, how he was what he was building, the body that he was building. So it was a very Guardian-based uh, Gendorf. So we could see that he was trying to um, rebuild himself, and my personal theory is that from that point, that having failed, um, the Time Shift Stones are trying to bring him back from an earlier timeline, and, and that's what we're going to be getting with these Time Shift Stones. I think these are honestly the key to the next game, because they can't just give us the same map. And they can't really give us a new map either because this is leapfrogging off of the previous game. So they can't just say, oh yeah, Hyrule's different now. It's been, you know, 15 years. They rebuilt the castle somewhere else, yada, yada, yada. The map looks different. Wink, wink. You guys know it's just this the way so you can explore. But what I think is going to happen is they are going to travel into a different timeline. Maybe not Twilight Princess, maybe a little bit after Twilight Princess, uh, but that kind of era. So all of those ruins that we've seen in Breath of the Wild, those will be restored. Uh, that would be a way to add freshness to the map, and with all the time that, that's passed, the terrain could be slightly different, and it could, fe it could feel new. There is also a lot of empty space in Breath of the Wild that uh, the, it's only filled up by Korok seeds, so that could be a way to fill it up um, by having this past era to travel in. And we know that this was intended at some point, because in Wind Waker, uh, when you travel down beneath the sea, there is game data for, uh, for anchors, for ship's anchors, that serve as warp points throughout Hyrule to the surface. So it was very much intended that you would be exploring this old version of Hyrule um, as a secondary map. So we could be seeing that in this game, and I, I think that it is very plausible. Uh, otherwise, for this trailer, I think that's honestly it. Uh, so for the remaining few minutes, I would like to talk about what I want to see in the Zelda game. In other words, the few things that I would like them to fix. And when I say the next few minutes, I actually mean in another video. You probably noticed that my shirt color changed from green to red, and that's because I'm stapling this outro onto, I guess, the middle of this recording, uh, because... I recorded so much and I had so many ideas of things that I would love to see change in Breath of the Wild that I think I'm going to make that its own video. So this is going to be a, not a one-off, but a two-off. And I have a lot of material and some of which I thought of after having recorded that initial segment. So uh, yeah, that's going to be its own video of Breath of, my Breath of the Wild 2 wish list. So I hope you guys anticipate that. Thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, click, and now I know, to point in this part of the screen. Please click the the card on screen to uh, go watch uh, Echo Soul's highlights of Pac-Man World 2. And I will see you guys in the next video.